Oh, gosh. I just saw my reflection in this ruler. Oh, my word. It spooked me. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. maybe it's time for me to leave this sewing room. I don't know. <laughs> Hi, friends. Tracy here from the Sewing Channel. I'll tell you real quick what today's video is. Then I have to get back to free motion quilting this quilt. So it's done. The story goes like this. My first granddaughter, Josephine, she was born on February 14th. So she has a birthday coming up this February. Of course, you know I decided to make her, you know, a heart themed quilt for her birthday. <laughs> this quilt is called My Heart. And it's because my Josephine, she's got my whole heart. I have a detailed full color quilt pattern just for you. Enough talking already. Let me show you how I made this quilt. The first thing you're going to do is cut out every single piece you need. And it's not going to be that hard because it's only squares and half square triangles. First up, let's make that darling piano key border. After you cut your strips for the border per the directions, you're then going to put opposite fabrics together, right sides together, and then pin along this side and you're going to pin along this side. You'll pin all the way down on both sides and then we're gonna take it over to the sewing machine and sew a quarter inch all the way down this side and a quarter inch all the way down this One side. One side note here, you wanna make sure that you either sew a true quarter inch or a scant quarter inch because the measurements on this border are very precise. So you wanna stay true to that quarter inch. No give there. Once you get to the end of the other salvage, then you're going to flip this around like so and then start sewing down the other side. You should end up with a tube that looks just like this. Now that both sides are all sewn up and you have your tube on both of your pieces, you're then going to come in on one side and measure two and three quarter inches. Keep in mind to measure the two and three quarter inches right up against the edge of this fabric and then slice. You should end up with four of these strip sets that have each of the border colors connected. And I'm going to open my seams on my border. Now you can do what you like, and I know a lot of you have preferences, and that's perfectly okay for us to have preferences. Some of you like to press to the dark side, and that's perfectly okay. For me though, for this border, I don't want a lot of bulk up there because I'm going to be free motion quilting with my home sewing machine and less bulk is better. Next, we're going to come in and slice off that selvage area. On your seam right here where the two fabrics meet up, you're going to find a line on your ruler and line it up. And then you're going to come in five inches. This seam right here will keep you nice and straight while you're trimming the strip set. This is what I meant when I said there was no wiggle room within the seam allowance to make sure that you sewed a true quarter inch seam. From this edge to this edge should measure five inches solid. It surely does. It's a perfect five inch this way and a perfect five inch that way. Continue cutting all of your border five inch squares. After you've cut all of your border five inch squares out, then it's time to line them up how you'd like them. I chose to swap out black, white, black, white for one of the borders. And on the other border, I started with a white, black, white, black. So it's up to you how you want to do that. I just think it made it more even across the whole quilt. One tip I can give you after you sew up that piano key border, be sure and make a stay stitch along one edge and then the other edge. And that's because we made the border first and we're gonna set it aside. And I don't want any seams coming undone. And I know you don't either. Now it's time to make some really fun half square triangles. Now I know you can cut out squares, so I'm not gonna show you that, but let me share with you how I make two at a time half square triangles. Now the reason why I do it two at a time and I don't do like that magic eight at a time is because I wanted more of a scrappy look. Try to get as many different reds as you can and as many different pinks as you can. That'll just make your quilt sparkle even more. You're going to take one red 
and one pink per the measurements on the pattern. You're going to lay them right sides together. Take a pencil and your ruler and lay your ruler down corner to corner and take your pencil and just mark it corner to corner. Go ahead and pop some pins in. Now that you have that line, you're just going to sew a quarter inch seam allowance on both sides of this line. Flip it around and sew down the other side. You should have two pieces. Next, what I do is open them up like so, and I finger press them open. Now, you don't have to press open if you don't want to. I do, I just prefer it sometimes, and I do on this quilt prefer it, because I am going to be doing a lot of custom quilting on this quilt, so yeah, open it is for me. But you do you. Now take your hot iron and just give it a press. You can totally chain piece these two at your sewing machine when you have a ton. Flip them over. Now just trim them down to the size required in the pattern. Now you will end up with two identicals when you pair them together like that, but that's okay because we need a lot. And that's all there is to making two at a time half square triangles. Now that you're done pairing up all of the half square triangles that you need and all your squares are cut out, then it's time to put it up on your design wall. Follow the diagram that comes in the pattern so that you get those half square triangles in the right spot. You want a pink touching a red and a red touching a pink in every situation. A tip I can give you to stay super organized with all of these squares and half square triangles is to mark each row while it's up on your design wall with a heat erasable pen or water erasable pen. And I just simply put the rows number and I put an arrow going up. And when I take each row down, I put that first one on top of the next one, the next one, and the next one. And then I take it over to my sewing machine, set it on the right hand side underneath the arm of my sewing machine. You know exactly which side gets sewn to which side. And that way, I just stay organized because I've been known for, you know, sewing things upside down and in the wrong order. So now this heart, if you haven't realized yet, it's sitting on a gingham background. So of course our squares reflect the dark, medium, and the white of a gingham. But after you get that first square of the entire heart all sewn up, then it's time to add the two side gingham pieces. After you have the two sides sewn on, then it's time to sew the top gingham and the bottom gingham, and then the top border and the bottom border. But another tip I can give you is to make sure that when you're sewing all that together, that you sew your piano keyboard top to that top gingham row. That way you don't have a lot to mess with at the sewing machine. You'll sew a piano key top border onto one row of gingham, and then you'll sew the bottom piano key border on the bottom row of gingham. And once you have those two together, then you can sew those on to your quilt okay, top. Okay, let's talk minky backing for a sec. This Darling Star Minky, I found at Joanne Fabrics. It was the perfect color pink and it had stars in it. And I was like, okay, I can deal with stars. I wish they were hearts, but I'm not going to use any batting in this quilt. It's only going to be my minky and my quilt top. Minky tends to come with a little bit a stretch both ways. Sometimes one way is a lot more stretchier than the other way. It's just the way it is. This one that has the smooth back on it, I find works really well on just a quilt top with no batting, or if you're gonna put a piece of flannel in it too, that works really well. The double fur side, I try to stay away from. 
you know, unless I'm doing, you know, a, a particular custom thing or something. I have done it before and it does turn out nice, but it's a little tricky to work with. This is a lot easier when it's smooth on one side. Sometimes you can find these minky backings in extra wide, like 106 inches or something like that. Now, I totally wish that, you know, I had that, but I don't. So I have to marry two pieces of fabric together to make the size quilt backing that I need. So I typically cut up, of course, the most efficient way of use of the fabric, and then I put right sides together and I sew a half an inch down the seam allowance connecting or marrying those two pieces together. Now, once I do that, I then butterfly those seams open and I cut a little bit wider of a strip of this stuff right here. This is a fusible interfacing and you can see there, hmm, there's some stretch there, right? This stretchy fusible interfacing will help keep the seam on this minky butterflied open beautifully. It won't get in the way when we free motion quilt or anything. Now Pellon makes this and it's called EK130 Easy Knit and I'll link everything down in the description box below so you can find it easily. Now you will have to press and put heat on this Easy Knit, on this seam, on this minky. You're going to do it quickly. You're not going to just keep your iron there, you know, and burn the minky because you can burn it. You know, it's not cotton, there's poly in it and different things and it will melt and you'll be upset. Just simply be quick and efficient about it and just press it, leaving it only for seconds. And then if you have to go back in again a second time, just do it lightly again and your minky won't be ruined. So that's a pretty easy quilt sandwich, a minky back and a quilt top. We are well on our way, friends. I know a lot of you send your quilts out to be quilted, but I want to encourage you to give it a go on your home sewing machine. It really is easy once you get the hang of it, I promise you. I wanted to share with you my setup so that you kind of knew what was going on as I free motion quilt. I have two hooks, one right here and one over here, which holds up both back parts of my quilt. I have my sewing machine here turned on its side. That's the beauty of the Juki. You can turn it on its side. It does have special feet so that you can actually see your free motion quilting from the side. If I lift up my quilt right here, you can see that there is a table right here. It's an acrylic insert table that goes with the Juki while it's on its side. It's amazing. Just take your time and practice on whatever. I mean, that's what it's going to take for you to be able to free motion quilt on your home sewing machine. My friends over at Juki Junkies, they just happen to sell this machine right here. It's my Juki QVP TL18 and it is awesome. They also sell the acrylic table insert. Now I do have an affiliate link, so be sure to click that link down in my description box so that you can get your free gift from Juki Junkies if you decide that you want a sewing machine. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but it helps the sewing channel Since out. This quilt is custom special made for my granddaughter Josie. I know that she sleeps hot. <laughs> so I didn't put any batting in this quilt because I want her to use it and be comfortable with it year round. All I did was spray baste some minky onto the quilt top. That's it. Even though there'll be no puffy quilting that you can really it see won't pop right out at you, there's still going to be quilting all throughout it. It's going to be custom and it's going to be just for her. Whenever I want to custom quilt, I always blow up the picture of the quilt or the sketch and I sketch in what quilting that I would like. For the bow, I think I'm going to start off with almost like an imaginary line right there coming in and then back up like that. Then this will be my stem and then I'm gonna do some feathers, I think. So I'm going to come around here Come back to the stem. Okay. 
and then come over here. And then I'll just do the same thing over here. I think that's how the bow is going to go, that part anyways. I'm not sure what to do on the straight part though. So while I'm thinking about that, let's go ahead and see if we can <laughs> free motion quilt this right here. Hopefully you can see all of the quilting on the back part. You can see there that that's the middle of the bow and then the feathers go out here and there. This is that one square piece that's off to the side. I did some paisleys. So the paisleys run all along the ribbon. So friends, I got a new Juki tool. It's a quilting ruler. I also have a ruler foot on right now. It's the thicker metal type round foot. And you need to make sure you have that on if you're going to be playing with rulers. So I already went one time around with the ruler because this is the first time that I've ever used this. And I have to tell you, it worked pretty good. You just have to get the rhythm of holding this inward, like up against the the ruler foot with your hand and then pushing this way. It has these right here, these little pieces that stick up and out on both sides here. So that way as you're going, you don't keep going. It kind of stops you. So that way you have to stop and readjust. You can totally get these rulers from Juki Junkies. They came in a set. So I haven't tried these ones out, but this one, so far, so good. Let me show you. I'm just outlining, and that's what the straight rulers are really good for, is just outlining. Now, let's see. I think I want it to go on this side, so I'm gonna switch gloves and try it this way. So I'm going to have the ruler on my left side, so it's budding up right there, because I want it to come out about a quarter inch or so from the very edge. So I'm kind of making, not kind of, I am making an outline around the entire heart. So let's see, here goes nothing, right? So you see how that stops you right there from going any further and then you can just slide it down and you can see right there how it made a stitch right next to that. So far, so good. I just have to remember to stop. Maybe I'll go like that so that I'll put it there so it helps me to stop. Since this is a sewing machine, I am going to shift and pivot my fabric because I feel like I'll have more control that way. So let me try it with my right hand and see. That's how I did it on the first line. But then you really can't see. This is in your way probably. Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to hold it with my right hand. 
So here's my big oopsie of the day. So I neglected to even look up this quilting ruler presser foot directions. So this is what happened. I didn't realize that this right here turns, which actually lowers, well, let's see. It actually lowers the presser foot down to your quilt or you can raise it up. And I was using it at the very top high, which I was like, wow, that's awfully high. And I didn't think it was right. So now I know this knobby thing turns to get this ruler foot closer to your quilt top where it should be rather than higher up the way I was using it. Lesson learned. <laughs> oh my word, friends, look at this. So you can see here, look at this, how low this is right against this quilt top. And you know, mind you, this is just two layers. I don't even have any batting and it fits nice and it's going to glide nice right across that quilt top. I was doing it so wrong a second ago. So, so let me line this ruler up and let me show you how nice, oh my goodness, and the other stitches look terrible, but I am not gonna unpick those. You better believe it. It's staying in this quilt and I will chalk it up to practice. Oh, these other stitches look just horrible, but they're staying. They're staying. I need like a little knobby or something to go on this because I feel like I need to be able to, you know, hold on to something. I don't know. Maybe I'll look for something small to hook on there because I don't want to go this way and hit my thumb into the needle. stitch looks a lot nicer oh my goodness the hardest thing for me is holding this in place if any of you have any tricks let me know in the comments so now that I have the entire heart bordered with some stitching I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do in the white the medium and the dark parts of this quilt now I'm thinking a meander of some sort because it would just, I don't know. I don't think I want to individually do each square as something. I think that might be too much. So I'm thinking just a big meander of heart. So I'm going to take my heat erasable pen and I'm going to first go over what I'm thinking I might want. And I'm going to start somewhere off of one of these stitch lines here. I'm thinking something like this. If I come out, Go in like that and then come down. The thing with a meander is you have to end up here so you can do another one of these like that. So if I come up here, so I need to make the bottom first. So if I come and I meander and I meander, I could go like that, kind of. Always go in the upswing and around into a heart and then back, something like that. I don't like this part though. I don't like all of that. So, the good thing about heat erasable, you can just go over it real quick with heat and then it's gone. <laughs> but you can't remark over it with the heat erasable right away because it will um, erase if it's still hot. So if I stay big, so say I'm gonna come out here Then I also want some of the hearts to go the opposite way because I don't want them all going, you know, in the same direction. So I can kind of, you know, come back around. Like that? Yeah, I think so. 
Okay, let me erase this madness because it will bother me as I free motion quilt it. So, we are just learning so much today. My thread kept on breaking, but it wasn't my bobbin thread at all. It was actually because I had the ruler foot on still, and I was trying to do all this, you know, maneuvering, and that doesn't work with a ruler foot. So I had to put back on my hopping foot, and now I'm going to continue and see if, you know, that solves the breaking of thread issue, because I don't usually break thread at all. So I keep trying to get back over here and that's what I need to do. So I'm gonna twist this around because I gotta focus on getting back over to that area. I keep putting my hearts in the direction that I'm ending up more this way and I have to fill in what's closest to what I've already free motion quilted here and then work my way out. That's best practice anyways. Oh my word, I feel like a hot mess today. Sorry guys, but when I try stuff that's new, you know, it is what it is. I may just break thread and come back over here. I think I will. So I'm gonna land in the white somewhere and stop right here because if I don't quilt this, that's all this open space right here, I might get some puckering. So I'm gonna just stop right there. See, I stopped in the white so that way it's not as noticeable when I restart again. This whole section right here, needs quilted because the bottom underneath it is already quilted so we have to get that taken care of i'm doing it again oh oh well i don't know which way to go once i get out there <laughs> that might take some learning but oh well So here is a shot from the back. There's some of that stitching uh, next to the heart. And then here is what that looks like from the back. It's really hard to see it on the front, but you can really see it on the back. Okay, I'm gonna go with this. A heart meander it is, you know, random style. <laughs> Let me share with you what I decided to do on this darling piano key border. For the piano key border, I decided to take two at a time and make consecutive hearts going up. Let me show you. So, oh yeah, the hair is up now, things are getting serious. <laughs> I've decided that I wanna do a wrap around binding from the back of this quilt. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Now, since I'm going to be doing the wrap around binding, you're not going to want to trim all the way up to here. Now, if I had batting in here, I would flip this back and I would just trim the batting only because I want that nice edge along here without trimming any of this just yet. All you're gonna do is just make sure that everything is nice and spread out with your hands that, you know, there's no ripples, there's no nothing. Because if it doesn't work out, we can go to plan B and then my plan B, well, let's not talk about plan B. Well, I'll tell you what plan B is in case plan A doesn't work for you. <laughs> plan B, if you didn't do something right here, you can always use your other fabric, cut strip of this, and go around just like you normally would on a regular quilt. It's from the edge of my quilt top, I'm gonna to measure over three quarters of an inch, and then I'm gonna slice all the way around. Now my quilt top is not totally straight along the edge, and that almost always happens because you know, quilting shrinks in different spots. Oh gosh, I just saw my, 
I just saw my reflection in this ruler. Oh my word. And it made, it spooked me. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. maybe it's time for me to leave this sewing room. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Get it together, Tracy. Get it together. <laughs> what I'm going to do is line your ruler three quarters of an inch. Try to find that best measurement in here. Like, make sure you look way down here. That's why it's good to have a really long ruler. Even if some is sticking out from the three quarters of an inch out, we'll be able to camouflage that, so no worries there. Once you have where the three quarters is, go ahead and slice. Would be nice if I had a bigger table, but I don't, so we are doing what we can with what we have. Measure three quarters of an inch, find that middle ground, and then slice. And we're gonna do that all the way around. Three quarters of an inch. You can really tell how much your quilting shrinks things up too when you do this. Ah, I just moved my ruler. No, you don't. You're going to find your 45 degree mark on one of your rulers and you're going to have your corner sitting out just like that. Now you're going to take this 45 degree mark and push it this way so that it's right along the edge there. Now what you're going to do is push it up this way until you get just past that point of your quilt top right there. You're going to want to pass it up about an eighth to a quarter inch somewhere in there. You know, it just depends on what your preference is. I take a small stitch there, a little less than a quarter inch. So I do go about an eighth of an inch from the corner out and check your line right here. This is very important. Make sure that that's still at 45, then you're gonna slice this off. Oh yeah, I said it. Bam, it's gone. <laughs> you're going to take the back here and fold it onto itself and even it up here. And then clip that. Just to keep things even, put another clip right there. Now I always make sure that these are even Steven right there and I start sewing here, right there. I come in about an eighth to a quarter inch, back stitch, and then come all the way in right toward that point. You're going to be amazed. You wait and see. <laughs> back stitch. and back stitch at that point too. Oh, it didn't really get even Steven, did it? Oh, I can see it. Just to get rid of some of that bulk right there, we're just going to snip that off, just like that. Now you're gonna stick your finger right in here. Stick it right in there, put this finger here, and then pop that out. Grab a pokey tool and kind of, you know, push that toward the point there. My friends, looky what you have. You have this super cute, super cute wrap around pink star binding. <laughs> and then all you're gonna do is come in here just on the inside and go all the way around. Now you can hand stitch that if you want, if you got time for something like that, but I don't have time for something like that. I totally machine stitch that. Let me know in the comments, are you a hand stitch binder or are you a machine quilting binder attacher? Let me know. Typically, you would just fold this over and you would clip it. Now I could even really, you could dab some glue there too to hold it, but I don't wanna take the time to do that because I get impatient. So I'm gonna eyeball how much gets pulled over and then I'm gonna pop it up here. Now, friends, remember, Minky, after it's cut, does not 
shed or shred and it doesn't fray. So you're good to go. You just come in a little bit from the edge of where that minky wraps around the front. Now you know you're gonna have that straight line in the back, outlining the back, but you know what, I don't care, who cares? I don't know why people care about that line. I don't. I mean, the party's on the front, right? I don't know, that's what I always thought. <laughs> I'm also, when I fold this in, I'm kind of pressing this way and pushing up this way. If not, it'll ripple toward me back the opposite way. Possibly. Not in every situation, but sometimes. Probably would help if I had my sewing bed on here, right? And I was sitting. <laughs> oh my goodness. It gets, uh, gets pretty silly here at the end at the sewing channel. I can guarantee it. It's a good thing we don't drink up in here. <laughs> so once you get up to that miter area, stop where that seam is, lift up and pivot. And drop down again. I am like, I need to back it up a little bit because I went too far. Okay, and pivot. Oh my gosh, I ran out of thread. Oh my goodness, you bobbin thread. So let's pretend that I was way down here. Let me just show this to you. <laughs> Look at that, nice, oh my goodness, just gorgeous, right? And then when you turn it over, you have this nice mitered corner, right? Oh yeah, okay, I'm gonna turn off my camera so I can change my bobbin thread and finish this right. quilt. So I ended up sitting down because my calves were hurting <laughs> and I decided to get my glue stick out because this was starting to kind of creep funny on me. Some minkies are stretchier than other minkies, so it just all depends. Sometimes you don't need a glue stick, but if you find that, you know, your fabric is shifting more one way, even though you're trying to ease it in, use a glue stick. So this is just by sew line. It's just, you know, a sewing glue stick. You just put it right along the edge here. It actually is a little gummy. I, I prefer Elmer's, to be honest but I have so much of it that I have to use that sew line up before I can, you know, I don't want to be wasteful, right? Nobody wants to be wasteful, but it is a bit gummy. It's like, it should be more, you know, I don't know, not gummy. <laughs> Fold this up over, and this should stabilize it. And what this does is it will stabilize it just long enough for us to get, you know, our stitches in. Here it is, friends, my heart, Josie's quilt. Oh my word, it is so cute. I mean, honestly, I just love it. Wait till you see the drape on this quilt. It's amazing. She loves to cuddle with soft things and she's going to love this. So this is the front and this is the back. Hopefully you can see, I don't know if you can or not, but it's hard to see all the quilting I know. This is the cream of the crop right here, friends. This is the one that people love to cuddle with, I'm telling you. My family won't cuddle with anything less than this right here. I can see Josephine pulling this out 20, 30 years from now and reading what her Mimi wrote to her or rather stitched to her on this quilt and just wrapping up in it and just thinking how much I loved her. <laughs> loved her enough to make her a quilt anyways. <laughs> the drape, okay, look at this, I mean, are you kidding me? What quilt can you do this with, right? <laughs> so this is the key to a great quilt. Drapeability. 
if it can lay on you and fall on your skin no matter where it's at it's a good quilt and sometimes when we put batting in our quilt it just makes things stiff and when you go to cover up with it it's like there's pockets of air in there and it's not even touching your skin so that's what my family likes anyways how many of you think that i can wait until february 14th to give this to josephine or how many of you think i'm going to give it to her early <laughs> i don't know odds could go either way on that one until next time on the sewing channel take care